Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about record and replay debugging with RR or double R. So up until this point, we've largely just looked at debugging live programs. So we'll run a program with some instrumentation, so with something like a sanitizer, or we'll run it you know, actively with some debugger like GDB, and we'll wait for some kind of error to happen. Now, another way that we can debug our programs is through traces, right? So instead of debugging the live execution of a program, we can record what happens, right, during execution, right, when, whenever our program fails, and then we can debug that recording, right? And that's what we can exactly do with this tool RR. So if we go ahead and look at the description of this tool from the, uh, the project site, we see that it aspires to be, you know, primary debugging tool for C and C++ programs um, that is mainly done by enhancing what we can do with GDB, right? So what we can do is record a failure once, then debug the recording deterministically as many times as we want, right? So we're just replaying the same execution multiple times. So let's see how we can do um, this kind of debugging with a simple example here. So we'll open up this zero error.cdp, and this program should look you know, pretty similar to something we've seen in the past here. Right, so we have a you know, fairly simple uh, program here where we're generating some random numbers with a random number generator. So random numbers between one and 100, random ints. And then we're going to divide 10 by some divisor, right? Um, and add that result equal to sum, and we'll break out of this loop when sum is greater than 200 here. Now the issue in this version of the program is that um, we're subtracting five from our divisor each iteration, right? And you know if we happen to get unlucky and our random number generator gives us a five, right? When we get this divisor and we subtract five from it, um, that could lead to a zero division error. So it could lead to some arithmetic exception here. Um, so we have some non-deterministic error. Let's see how we can debug it with our R here. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here and we'll compile uh, this zero error.cpp with just, you know, O2 optimizations and dash G so we get some nice line numbers. So we'll go ahead and compile this and, you know, similar to how we run a program with GDB, um, we can run this program with RR record, right? And then just whatever you know, we need to pass to say our executable that we want to run, right? If we have any command line arguments. So here we'll just record um, zero error and you can see that when we run this, it records our execution trace to some directory that we've set here. Um, now, in this case, our program didn't actually fail, right? In fact, it may take multiple different runs since this is a non-deterministic error to actually get some kind of failure here. So it wasn't until the um, fourth try here where we actually had our failure. So in situations like this, it might be useful to use something like a while loop from the command line. So we can do something like while rr record the execution of this program, um, we're just going to run this over and over until this fails, right? And then we're going to finish up this loop. So that gives us an easy way to kind of do this from a command line here. Okay, so now we've rerun our program and we hit a case where this fails. So let's go ahead and debug this recording. So to debug this latest recording here, we can just do rr replay. And from there, you can see it really just takes us into GDB here. So we're just going to debug this you know, recording like we would uh, the normal execution of a program, right? And just inside of GDB. So because we're in GDB, we can use any of the kind of tools um, or most of the tools that we're well accustomed to. So for example, we can go ahead and just open up our text user interface here, our, our TUI. So I'll just do control X one, right? To open up this text user interface. We can set a temporary breakpoint at our main function here. And then we can just continue execution to get to that point. So you see, we got into our main function here, right? So we're debugging with RR and this isn't, you know, the live debugging of some program that's currently running. What we're really doing is uh, debugging a recording of our execution. So from here, right, like I said, we can do any of our kind of normal D, uh, GDB debugging strategies. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to, we could just continue on with our program here, right, until we hit our failure. So we'll just run continue, and eventually we get to our arithmetic exception here. So something on this line that we got to led to an arithmetic exception. You know, we can go ahead and print out, you know, what is our sum here? Right, we see that we have a sum of 172, so we're a few iterations deep into this loop. And we can also print out something like our divisor here, and 
there's our problem. Uh, we're doing 10 modulo zero here, or divisor is equal to zero. So we're getting this kind of zero division error, right? And that's our arithmetic exception. Now, one of the nice things about debugging a recording like this is that we can run our programs in reverse and do what's sometimes known as reversible debugging, right? Uh, and this is something that's fully supported in GDB as well, right? So we can run record from within GDB to record our execution and then do things like reverse continue, reverse step, and reverse step I here. So, for example, in this case, right, I can do, you know, reverse step. Um, to step back before we had this arithmetic exception, right? So now I'm in the state of the program before it's crashed, right? So let's go ahead and look at, you know, some more of how we can, you know, work with this kind of reversal debugging, right? And this is really enhanced by the fact that we're working with really just kind of a trace of instructions, a recording of our program's execution, right? We can just run it forwards, we can run it in reverse either way, right? So let's go ahead and change our our layout here, right? So here we're now looking at um, our low level assembly instructions and you can see we're on our IDIV instruction here. So that's how we do our modulo at a low level. It's really just integer division, right? We're just looking at the remainder. So another thing we'll might want to do here is debug with our registers, right? So we'll split our you know layout here and we'll do layout regs as well. So what we see is that we're doing this IDIV instruction on this uh, ECX register here. So this is what we're doing modulo by, right? 10 modulo, you know, whatever's being stored in ECX here. So that's a value that we might want to watch here. So what I can go ahead and do is just set a watch point on this ECX register, right? I want to know when it actually gets set to zero here. So we'll go ahead and watch ECX. And then what I can do, right, because we have this recording of the execution of a program, we can just run a program in reverse here, right? We can even step through a program in reverse if we want to. But here, let's just go ahead and continue our program, but in reverse. So what I can do is just reverse continue, and that will uh, just run our program in reverse you know, until it gets to a point, right, because we set this watch point here, until ECX changes, right? So we'll just do reverse continue. And you can see where it stops here, right? It stops because the value of ECX was updated. So the old value was zero, right? Because we're doing modulo zero here. And the value before zero was set for ECX is this, you know, minus 211, you know, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter here. And it takes us to the instruction where that happened here, right? Or where there, our value was updated. So it's going to be this load effective address instruction. And you can see exactly what it's doing. It's taking some value RAX, subtracting five from that value, and setting ECX with the result here. If we look at our registers at the top of the screen, we see the value of RAX is five, right? So what we're really doing here is just RAX, which is five, minus five, and setting ECX equal to that result, which will just be zero here. So now we see exactly what's kind of going on in our program here. We're subtracting five um, from our value that we got from our random number generator here. So you can see that we've got this call to this uniform int distribution. So we've got this random number that was generated back. We're subtracting five from it, and then that's leading to a zero here, right? But we were able to step through a program in reverse, right? Reverse continue. Um, see how values change in reverse, right? Like I said, we can do any manner of, you know, reverse step to reverse step through um, our code if we want to. And we can also do things like single step um, instructions in reverse. So, you know, reverse step I as well, right? But this is all debugging kind of, uh, you know, with just an instruction trace here. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. Uh, that's a simple example of how to use this tool RR or double R to do this kind of record and replay debugging and show some of the power that it has, right? So in other cases where we have instances of things like stack smashing, right, where it looks like, you know, you know, a backtrace doesn't show, show us anything interesting um, with reversible debugging, right? We can just step backwards before the stack got smashed and see what the state of our program was, right? So it can be really helpful in those circumstances as well. Now, like I said, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. I'll make sure to link this documentation below the video. And as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.